Hey there, and after a country move and six or so weeks waiting for our gear, welcome back to Get Indie Gaming, where today we're counting down our top 10 most wanted indie games expected out this April 2021. Up first, and coming from the team who brought us Rainswept, we have Forgotten Fields, which launched April 14th on PC via Steam. In this one, you play a Sid, an author struggling with writer's block, a condition where authors are unable to produce new pieces of work or experience a slowdown within the creative process. You join Sid as he reluctantly takes a journey back to where he grew up, with his family home soon to be sold. In doing so, you'll likely find Forgotten Fields quite rightly as the developers describe it, as being a really cosy, story-driven, mostly visual novel. It's one of those games that's just right to play in one sitting on a lazy Sunday afternoon, with its vibrant visual art style and cinematic presentation. There are puzzles here and there, although none of them are particularly taxing, and we're not too sure if we'd rather they had been left out, although when you do come across these puzzler sections, well, they don't overly slow down the pace of the adventure. As pretty much always with these kind of experiences, it would be super easy to spoil what's a very relatable story. It is, however, not without a few issues here and there, although none of them are game breakers and might be patched out at some point in the future. Maybe the worst offender is the camera, which at times can make things harder than needs be. There's also clipping and audio cue issues, which does take some of the shine off, what really is a rather engaging tale that's still worth your time and experience. Up next and at number 9, Don't Forget Me launches onto PC by way of Steam and GOG on April 20th. Said to be inspired by her story and the Red Strings Club, Don't Forget Me is styled as a jazz punk detective adventure game that combines classic adventure gameplay with an intricate puzzle system. That's designed to offer players a stern challenge with it testing observation, empathy, reasoning and deductive skills, all the while using decision-based gameplay where the game seeks to test and push you to the limits of your own morality. While we've yet to play it, the pixel art looks every bit as good as anything we've seen all year. Don't forget me could end up being one of this month's hidden gems. Moving on, and at number 8, Emily is Away 3 is the third in a series of visual novel games that are told by way of certain features of social media as seen over the time period between the middle and the end of the 2000s. While the previous game used a look and feel associated with the AOL Instant Messenger, this time, well, the game uses something resembling Facebook, where at the game's onset you set up your profile and away you go. Now, in all honesty, this is really rather good, and instantly puts us back to around 2008, when using social media, well, like Facebook, felt just so fresh and for the most part, just so positive. As you play, you decide with whom to make friends and shape the story based upon your decisions. It's all deeply nostalgic, and while it can be completed in an evening, there are multiple endings if you fancy playing around and taking different paths from the start to the finish. Emily is Away 3 is available now for PC via Steam and itch.io. At number 7, Before Your Eyes is a first-person narrative adventure which tells the stories of a soul's journey into the afterlife. It begins with you on the ship of a mythical ferryman, and in order to help you pass on, he must learn the story of your life, and in so doing, he sends you back to relive your most important moments. Now here's the twist. This game uses your webcam with it tracking your face, with you learning to control the flow of the story by way of having you blink. In places, well this really is a tough play. It comes with a powerful story throughout, that's backed by some top-notch voice acting and a beautiful soundtrack. It's certainly emotional, and the blinking mechanic seems to work really rather well. Before Your Eyes came out April 8th for PC. At number 6, and again a game that launched on April 8th, we have Eight Doors Aram's Afterlife Adventure. In this game, you play as Aram within a story-driven Metroidvania-styled action platformer, 
that's said to be heavily influenced by Korean folklore, with it featuring many memorable concepts and characters. Now we really like how this one looks, not only with its hand-drawn visuals which incidentally only use three colours, red, black and white, but also in how meaty, solid and fluid the combat seems to be, with it emphasising fluid combo attacks and timely dodges. While we've yet to play it, it's wearing its influences fully front and centre, and it's those boss battles that have really grabbed our attention. Eight Doors, a Rum's Afterlife Adventure can be found on Steam and GOG. Hello, Janel. Since I was little, I've always dreamed of becoming a writer. We went to see Gran today. At number five, and while Lost Words Beyond the Page has previously come out by way of a Stadia exclusive, it launched on PC via Steam and all the usual digital console storefronts on April the 6th. Written by Rihanna Pratchett, Lost Words is a narrative adventure that takes place within the personal diary of a girl called Izzy. It's a beautifully told tale that's touching and relevant to so many. It's the story here alongside the watercolour-like visuals that works so well and why we're happy to give this game a further signal boost. It's also carefully and skillfully put together, with this being an easy recommendation for fans of such visual narrative experiences. At number 4 and expected out on April 22nd for PC and the Nintendo Switch, Turnip Boy commits tax evasion, sees you take control of a sentient turnip, who by all accounts happens to be somewhat of a menace to society. Throughout the game you're needing to undertake various quests and tasks in order to pay back your tax debt to Mayor Onion. There's no denying this all looks like an early Legend of Zelda game, which is all fine by us. Aside from apparently undertaking in tax evasion, the developers promise a game that's full of deep story and one with multiple endings where you're able to explore dungeons full of puzzles while also getting to look after a garden that needs your help to fight off nasties and various monsters. There's also said to be plenty of characters for you to engage with and also the promise of being able to take down what's called the corrupt vegetable government. So yes, all of this sounds and looks rather fun and we're looking forward to getting hold of this and possibly streaming it live come launch day. Next up and at number 3, Cozy Grove is another offering within the community simulator genre and should be on the wants and wish lists of anyone who rather enjoys games such as Stardew Valley and of course Animal Crossing New Horizons. While it launched on April 8th, we've been playing it for a couple of weeks and as suggested by the developers, we agree it feels like a game that works best if you play it for let's say 20 or 30 minutes per day over an extended period of time. That being said, the campaign has more than 40 hours of playtime, with this easily being extended by many, many side quests, which could see the game giving months and months of enjoyment. Picking up and playing Cozy Grove has become a daily ritual here in the Get Indie Gaming household, and something we've done in the evening when looking to unwind at the end of the day. You can get hold of Cozy Grove on Apple Arcade, PC via Steam and Epic, as well as the Switch, PlayStation and Xbox platforms. At number 2, having come out on PC via Steam as well as for Xbox, including Game Pass and the Nintendo Switch, Rain on Your Parade is quite frankly an utter delight. You play as a devilishly wicked cloud who's really only up for causing people mischief and distress by way of rain, snow, thunder and tornado across 50 or so levels. There's nothing too taxing here until you open up a new game plus mode, with the game really just about being fun with plenty pop culture references here and there, ranging from Silent Hill to Metal Gear Solid to The Office to Doom and even The Legend of Zelda. In places the writing is really rather funny with it being both clever and witty. It's just one of those games designed to put a big old grin across your face and it manages to do this time and time again. Taking the number one slot for new indie games out this April, Buildings Have Feelings 2 comes out April 22nd. In this one, we have a city management game unlike any other where the buildings are able to talk and walk about the place. They also have dreams, hopes and aspirations as you look to build and grow the city from the Victorian era through to modern day. 
Players will need to discover new ways to attend to their city's needs, as recently explained by the developer Blackstaff Games. They go on to say this might mean refurbishing a building, moving it to a new location, or perhaps taking the wrecking ball to it and starting afresh. Buildings Have Feelings 2 looks stuffed full with character, and is coming out on all of the usual platforms, with you also able to pick this one up in a physical version on PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch at some point soon after its digital release. And there we go, many thanks for watching and be sure to click that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. Please feel free to let us know which of these you like the look of and on anything we missed this month down there in the comments. We look forward to seeing you all again here soon for more indie game videos.